This fight is the fight that exploded Sugar Sean onto the scene. Nicely done. When you do the spinning body kick, a lot of mistakes that people make is they try to spin. We got this from Conor McGregor. Conor was breaking down one of his fights and he threw a head kick and he talked about it. So when you go to the UFC and say, hey, I got this 6-0 kid, Sean Shelby sees it and like, damn, that's the right kid. Okay, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to the channel. Okay, I'm Tim Welch, and I'm coming at you with another fight breakdown. This fight is the fight that exploded Sugar Sean kind of onto the scene that the matchmakers saw. It happened in LFA, May 5th, 2017. Tail of the tape here. We've got Sugar Sean, 6-0, 22 years old, 5'10 at height, versus David Nuzo, 5-1 professional record, 27 years old and 5'8". David Nuzo is from a, a gym across the valley who I know the coaches, they're very tough coaches. I knew he was gonna become tough, prepared. I knew the style matchup was good for us though. So here we go, boom, two minutes in, here's the start of the fight. Sugar comes out southpaw, switches his stance sporadically, no really rhyme or reason, just to kind of mess with the opponent, mess with his, mess with his mind a little bit. A lot of boxers, a lot of boxers, their coaches sit there and if a guy's southpaw, they have certain combos they like. If the guy's orthodox, they have certain combos they like. So with boxers, they're sometimes taking that in. So if you have a fighter who's constantly switching stances, no rhyme or reason they're switching stances, it really kind of takes away from them and it forces them to just throw without even thinking. Right away, Sugar Sean comes out and he starts stutter stepping with the front foot. Stutter stepping with the front foot. You're either going to get the guy reacting and just see how he reacts to it. He's either swatting at it, moving his head, and if he's not reacting at all, maybe you can start getting a jab into him. So this stutter step's a super underrated thing to just kind of see what your opponent's going to do. Sean's standing southpaw, whips a head kick, lands in an orthodox stance, and without any load up, hides it with his jab a little bit. Without any load up goes a spinning body kick. Someone who is really good at this back in the day is Kung Lee. And when you do the spinning body kick, a lot of mistakes that people make is they try to spin all the way through the body kick. And you don't want to do that with a body kick. You want to turn your front foot and go straight back into the opponent. So all the power is going straight back more than the spin. And with Sean, he, he he's so good at this and he has no load up with it. So you don't know where it's coming. It's either going to come to the body. It's going to come to the head. It's going to come as a wheel kick to the head. He's very good at this. And that's a nice little sequence there. Back into southpaw, stutter stepping in. Same thing, southpaw orthodox. He steps into a left hand. That's gonna be your main shots. When you're going against opposite stances, it's gonna be your back leg and your back hand that you're trying to set up. Those are gonna be your main shots. Back to the body. And you hear his corner, you hear his corner uh, saying, get in his chest, get in his chest. With someone who's switching stances and throws a lot of fancy kick, that's the that's the way to get him. You cut him off on the cage, you try to get your head in their chest to where it takes away a lot of their length and range. You can come over the top, you can go to the body. And so I hear his corner saying that, get in his chest, get in his chest, cut him off. Easier said than done. Trading some jabs here. Orthodox, orthodox. Little stutter steps trying to open him up. Get him swatting, get him reacting. So here, orthodox, orthodox. He does the same same spin. Same spin, but this time he goes to the head. He comes with a wheel kick to the head. Nuzo has a good reaction, and uh, he ends up blocking it. Back in the southpaw head kick. Okay, right here about 351. Sean does what we call a Roy Jones Jr. He winds up the hand and off that Roy Jones, he's going to decide whether it's a one, two, whether it's a knee up the middle, whether it's a head kick. There's a lot of things that can come from it. From here, he goes, Roy Jones steps in with the left hand. Nuzo slides out of the way pretty smoothly. Teeps up the middle. Beautiful. So we're at 333 of the first round here. Sean does a good job at disguising the double jab. He goes double jab to cover distance to get his feet in range and he launches an overhand right. Right here, 339. Double jab. Boom. And he launches the overhand right. Covers good distance on that. Covers good distance. Early on in the fight, if you have a plan and you're missing your punches just by inches, 
That means later in the fight, you just got to bring your feet with you a little bit more just to get to him. But uh, Sean's very explosive and he's good at covering distance more than people think until you get in front of him. So this is a good one. Let's watch it one more time. 338 first round. He goes double jab, bang, and he smacks him with the overhand right, lands into a southpaw position. Then he throws a left head kick. 331, he throws a left head, left head kick, and he's got him hurt. David Nuzo wrestles up, gets the underhook, wrestles up. And this is smart by Sean. He's got his neck here, and he could decide to flop to a guillotine, give up his back, but then that turns into a grappling match, gives him a chance for Nuzo to be close to him and regain his composure. He does a good job here. Start framing, wizarding, making space. And he gets free. This is what a lot of people make mistakes. They hurt a person and they go crazy. The crowd goes crazy, so they go crazy. Their emotions get high, their body gets tense, and they go and just try to empty the tank and finish this person. Early on, very important when you hurt someone just to stay composed, breathe and relaxed. And you have to make the decision, are they really hurt? If they're really hurt, then maybe I'll go in there and put them away. But if they're not, just stay composed, stay back to a good a good stance, good balance, back to your feints, and, and a viral KO can come soon, soon after that. So now we're orthodox, orthodox, southpaw orthodox, switching it, make, confusing him, freezing him up a little bit, making him hesitant from coming forward. Another spin body kick beautifully, lands southpaw. Boom. So this is beautiful. We're at 252 of the first round. And Nuzo slides back and he tries to counter with the left hook. Sean covers up tight. Right after the left hook comes, boom, he whips a clean, fast uh, left hand. And it hits him right on the lips. Puts him to his face, hurts him. Nuzo catches a single leg, but Sean's very, very hard to finish on these takedowns. His balance is very good. Um, he's very flexible. He's very slick, so it's hard to finish on him. So he pushes Nuzo off. Walks, kind of runs in there, no rhyme or reason. Doesn't know if he's out southpaw orthodox. He's just a good athlete. Whips a right head kick and spins into a hook kick right to the face and really just flatlines him here. We got this from Conor McGregor. I forgot who it was against, but I think it was against Diego Brand Brandau. Conor was breaking down one of his fights and he threw a head kick and he talked about he really wanted to spin the other way, but his feet were really weren't set up from it. So we thought about that early that morning, we worked on it and for Sean to just watch it a couple times, work a couple times on the pads and then go do it in a fight. That's what, that's what makes him really a freak athlete. Walks at him, throws a right head kick and he has the balance and the footwork to spin in the completely opposite way and throw a hook kick. Drops him like a bag of chips. He really does. But if you've been doing karate or taekwondo your whole life, you have the balance and you've been doing that for years. He really hasn't been doing that for years. So he really is a special athlete to be able to throw a kick one way and spin the absolute other way and knock him out. Let's rewatch that again, the whole sequence. It all starts off. He counters back with the left hook, gets smacked with the left hand, limp legs out of the single, right head kick, left spin kick. And that's all she wrote. So when you go to the UFC and say, hey, I got this six and oh kid, they say, okay, let me see some of his fights. Now he's seven and oh, and it was in the LFA, a versus a, a very good opponent, five and one. Sean Shelby sees it and like, damn, that's, that's the right kid. Whether it's for the Ultimate Fighter Contender Series, thankfully it was for the Contender Series. And this fight is what got him the opportunity to fight in the Contender Series and, and start the whole, whole UFC journey. So, hey guys, hope you enjoyed the uh, breakdown. Check out my channel. Tons of videos, uh, podcasts going up every week and tons of other stuff. Comment what you guys think below and let me know your thoughts. All right, guys, see you soon. Love you. Bye-bye.